This update brings new animals, massively expands the animal husbandry skill, and has some other more modest changes. These include reworking brewing, updates to pathfinding, some new decorations, and some UI changes. I'll be diving into all of this, what it means, and giving you some general first impressions on how useful and fun these changes are. In addition to the previous wolves, rabbits, and deer, there are a lot of new animals. Cows, chickens, goats, boars, sheep, dogs, rats, and foxes will either help or hinder your colony. Seriously, rats are a hell spawn that breed out of control. The animal behavior you're used to seeing from those wandering around if you've played before this update are now considered wild. Any wild animals, regardless of species, will meander around the map looking for food and generally avoid your settlement unless they're desperate for a meal. When hungry, they will sneak in. All of the animals seem to be able to eat vegetables, including foxes, boars, and wolves. The map will start out with some of these animals, although you won't immediately have access to every kind. Instead, there are new events that let these animals wander onto the field. Whereas your only other option before was to hunt these wild animals down, now you can choose to tame them. This is an animal husbandry job, wherein one of your settlers will attempt to domesticate the animals. Their success chance depends on how difficult the species is to tame, as well as their own personal skill. The difference between traditionally domesticated animals and more wild ones is massive. Cows are almost a guaranteed success, but foxes are nearly impossible to domesticate. Failure may result in retaliation, while success will increase the animal's tame set based on the species. Chickens are tamed in one success, while a deer will take at least five. This bar slowly decreases over time, but successive tamings will fill it up. You can only attempt to tame each animal once per day, which makes hard to tame animals even more difficult. A failure will allow the stat to fall pretty significantly. Easily tamed animals will take a day or three, but deer can take an entire season even with a well-suited colonist, and it feels like boars or foxes will take luck and a brilliant tamer to even tame at all. Once this bar is full, the animal becomes domesticated. Unlike wild animals, which will roam around the entire map, domesticated animals will idle around your settlement unless you construct a pen. They'll sleep beneath a roof and seek out food on their own. They can be harvested for replenishable resources. Chicken give eggs, sheep give milk and wool, cows and goats give milk, and so on. These can also be slaughtered, which will instantly kill them and leave behind a carcass like hunting them would. Domesticated animals still need access to food, and if they begin to starve, they'll lose health and start attacking settlers. Animal pens are the primary way of disclosing where an animal should stay. You build these with either fences or walls and put a pen marker inside. To help with this, there are two new types of doors available. A fence gate works like a door, but looks and functions like a fence. You can't build anything on top of it, but it will still prevent animals from wandering out. There's also a barn door, which can't be locked or set to always open like a normal door will, but it will always let animals through without any issues. This lets you build interiors like a barn. Animal handling jobs now include leading domesticated animals to these pens. Although some animals, like wolves and foxes, can't be put in pens even after they're domesticated. In addition to keeping your animals nearby, pens also allow you to set up and control animal breeding. More space means they'll breed more quickly, while overcrowded pens won't have any or many new births until some of the animals die off of old age. Settlers with the animal husbandry job will regularly go to these animals when they're ready and harvest their goods. There's a lot of new ones. Although wool existed before, it's now possible to harvest it directly instead of relying on breaking down goods or traders. You can also harvest eggs and milk, which can be cooked directly or used in the new fermentation process that I'll go into in a bit. Domesticated animals can be further tamed. This system works similarly to their initial taming from wild animals into domestic ones, and the bar fills even more slowly. Expect this process to take entire seasons, even for easily domesticated animals. Pets are allowed to ignore doors and will roam around the settlement. They can even handle some simple tasks. While all animals can be turned into pets, not all animals do every task. Wolves and foxes will attack enemies, while others, like sheep and goats, can occasionally haul goods. Fermentation is started at a new building known as a fermenting mash. It no longer needs a brewing station. Instead, brewing and fermenting on the old research trees have switched places. The fermenting station will let you turn milk into curdling milk, fruit into fermenting fruit, and alcohol ingredients like barley, berries, and mushrooms into fermenting mash. Instead of rotting, these will then ferment to cheese, rough wine, or rough alcohol. Currently, this is best done at cooler temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The brewing station, which is now a fairly late game technology, will allow you to brew higher quality products, although these will still need to ferment over time. The pathfinding changes are a little hard for me to show or to evaluate. Essentially, the game is now faster and better at making settlers do what they should be doing. This optimization is supposed to help late game smoothness, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to make a difference for enemy raiders like I was really hoping it would. They'll still funnel through your chokes very slowly. 
I think this is going to play a role in large colonies with a huge amount of characters, but it's still too early for me to see any major differences just yet. There are new decorations, trophies. These let you lend more character to your village. You can turn any animal, or human, carcass into a trophy instead of cutting it up for meat at a butcher's table. Hang your enemy's skulls so no foe thinks to attack you. It, it doesn't really work like that. It'd be cool if it did though. There's also a nice UI change where clicking a stockpiled resource on the right will jump to it. Note that the update will not be compatible with previous versions, so you will need to start a new colony to see all these features. Although you can continue your old colonies by going to the beta branch on Steam and choosing to play on the old version. Overall, I like these changes and the possibilities that they open up, although I'm not sure if raising animals is better than any other ways of harvesting resources just yet. If you let animals out to wander for food, they'll be hard to train and harvest, it'll take your settlers a long time. Conversely, if you keep them in a pen to harvest and breed, you're going to have to grow food for them instead of food for yourselves. You'll grow food to feed the sheep to harvest wool instead of just growing flax. Without the need for diverse diets or difference between materials, this currently feels more like an aesthetic choice or a stylistic choice for a growing settlement. That doesn't mean it's not a ton of fun though. Adding a chicken pen, a barn for sheeps and cows, or training wolves to fight off raiders is amazing. And the fact that it both allows for this and opens the door for future changes to dietary needs or other survival factors means that I'm super excited for this update. What are you most excited for in this content update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and want to see my other stuff, I have videos that focus on tips and tricks to make your bases better and a few challenge runs. Right now, I'm running the Impossible Gauntlet.